Shall we give people a few more minutes to come on and join us? I would say so, yeah. Okay, sounds good. Because we have roughly, roughly 50 people joining. Okay, awesome. Register. We do have a lot of material to get through today in just an hour. So I'm gonna give us another 30 seconds or so, and then I'll go ahead and start. Okay, well, welcome everybody to the HRSA Data Collection Platform webinar for the Telehealth Network Grant Program TNGP grantees. My name is Catherine and I'll be your facilitator today. I also have some of our project team uh, in the chat room on this call to help answer any questions. So today we'll walk through the system, uh, the new HRSA Data Collection Platform. For some, completing the performance report may be brand new, but for others of you who previously had grants, this new system is replacing the old EHV's PIMS where you previously completed your performance reports. We will walk through the system in a live demo. Please note as we go through the demo that some of the information you're going to see is test information. So it's gonna look a little bit different than what the system will look like when you log in. When you log into your account, you will only see the program and grant that is associated with you. At the end, we'll also answer any questions you may have. So throughout the presentation, please feel free to put any questions you have in the chat box and we'll do our best to answer them as we're going along or at the end of the presentation. Our agenda today is as follows. First, we'll be going over a quick overview of the change and who it's affecting. Then we'll look at how to access the new HRSA data collection platform and how to navigate the homepage. Next, and most important to everybody on the call, I'm sure, is how to complete and submit your performance report. Then we'll look at how to view the approval history and your approved reports. Next, we'll show you how to respond to change requests from HRSA. And finally, we'll show you how to access your grantee raw data report. So let's talk about the transition. Before we get into system details, let's talk a little bit of background information on this transition. As of September 1st of this year, any performance reports created for the TMGP program grantees will be created and submitted in the new HRSA data collection platform. This new system has an updated look and feel and is easier to navigate to give you a better experience while completing and submitting your performance reports than our previous performance reporting system. As a reminder, this only applies to performance reports created on or after the reporting period of September 1st, 2023 to August 31st, 2024 which makes your submission open date September 1st, 2024, and your report due date October 11th, 2024. Now I'll go ahead and hand it over to Jerry for our demo. Thank you, Catherine. Give me just a moment to share my screen.
All right, so hopefully everyone can see my screen and welcome everyone to our training session uh, for our TNGP grantees. So I'm sharing my screen. This is the screen that you will see when you log into uh, the data collection platform right at the top. It's going to welcome you to the HRSA data collection platform. And then uh, on the lower right, sorry, on the right in the upper right corner, you'll see your name. And if you click on your name, you'll see you have the option to go to the home page or to log out. And then you'll see uh, tabs for the home page for the OAT performance reports for data extractions, where you'll be able to see additional reports, and for the help tab, uh, where you'll be able to get additional information to help you as you navigate uh, through the data collection platform system. The performance reports tab, the data extracts tab, and the help tab have corresponding widgets at the bottom. So if you want to open uh, any one of those resources, you can either click on the tab at the top or the resource at the bottom, and then there's an explanation here in the middle of the HRSA system that you're using. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the OAT performance reports tab by clicking on the widget here at the bottom. And when I click on this, this opens up and shows us a view of the performance reports. You're gonna notice here at the top, it says, this is your recently viewed performance reports. Um, <clears throat> So this is the default list view that you will see when you log into the system, the recently viewed. And when you uh, click on the words recently viewed or the arrow next to it, you're gonna see that you have the option to choose other list views. You can choose the approved reports list view, which will show you all of the reports that you submitted that have been approved by your project officer or another reviewer at HRSA. Uh, your change request reports, change requested reports, which are going to be the re performance reports that you have submitted that the PO, the project officer, has sent back to you with requested changes. Uh, your in-progress reports are going to be those performance reports that have a status of in-progress or not started. Uh, your recently viewed uh, performance reports are going to be the ones that you've recently viewed. And your submitted reports are going to be the reports that you submitted that have not had action taken on them yet by your project officer. I do want to mention that the very first time that you log in, it will default to your recently viewed and you won't see anything listed here because it's your first time logging in and you haven't viewed anything yet. So there's nothing that was recently viewed. Uh, and to solve that, you'll just go to one of the other list views and view one of the reports. And then after you review it, when you go back to recently viewed, it'll be listed in your recently viewed reports. I also wanna mention that if you uh, want to see a particular, want to have a different uh, list view be your default list view, you can use this pin here to the right of the list view name and pin that list view. See, we get a little message here that it was pinned. And so now if I go to the home page and come back to the OAT performance reports, it's defaulting to show me the change requested reports. Uh, so that pinning is really easy. I'm going to go ahead and change it back to recently viewed and pin it again. And again, we get our success message that my list view was pinned. And that's how you can select your list views. So now that we've talked about the list views, let's talk about the uh, report list that you're seeing in all of these list views. Uh, so what you're seeing is the very first column, you're seeing the tracking ID. These tracking IDs are generated by the data collection platform for each one of your performance reports. It's how in the system we tell your performance reports apart. Uh, each one of these is a clickable link. If you click on that link, that's gonna open up the report for you. Um, the next column is the submission status. Uh, your submission status is will either be on track or past due. The next is the submission name and the submission name is usually the fiscal year and the report name, sorry, the program name. And then your grant number associated with your uh, grantee organization. And then the program name, uh, whether it's uh, TNGP, if you happen to be a grantee for other OAT programs like EBTNP, 
or TRC, then you might see programs in here or, or performance reports in here for those as well. As Catherine mentioned, this is test data. So if you only have a grant with the TNGP program, then when you log in, you will only see uh, your performance reports for the TNGP program. Uh, next is the reporting period. It shows you the reporting period start and end date. And last is the status. Uh, the status can be not started, in progress, submitted, approved, change requested. Those are your status options. Um, and so now that we've talked about what you're seeing in this grid for all of your different uh, performance reports, let's go ahead and open one up. First thing I want to do is I want to show you what a performance report looks like when you're just beginning not started. So I'm going to choose the one that has the status of not started. And when the performance report opens up, the first thing you see in the upper left is that performance report tracking ID again. Uh, so you can see it there as you're working on the performance report. The next thing you'll see is an expandable header. When the header's collapsed, you see the tracking ID, sorry, the grantee number. You see the uh, grantee organization and you'll see the um, reporting period start and end date. If we expand the header, then in addition to that grant number, grantee organization, and current reporting period start and end date, you're gonna see the report due date, uh, the review status, which is currently not started, and the submitted date. The submitted date will be blank until you actually submit the report. Uh, after that, uh, the submitted date will be populated with, what, with the latest day of submission. So if you submitted the report on December 4th, uh, it would reflect the submission date of December 4th. But if then it, if it was a change request was made and you submitted the report again on December 11th, then the submitted date would reflect that latest date of December 11th. Below the uh, expandable header, we have the grantee data entry section. And this is where you can see the forms for your report. Uh, and each form has its own status. You can see there's an image, a, a symbol here next to each form. Uh, there's a guide or a legend for these symbols. If the symbol is a red circle, that means that the form is not started. If the symbol is a yellow clock, that means that the form is in progress. And if the symbol is a green circle with a check mark, then that means that the, uh, form is complete. The individual forms you can open and work on. You have options to either view the form uh, or if the form is not started, you'll have an option to start the form. The view option will let you see the form in read-only mode. Uh, the start option will let you begin to start to work. Once you work in a form, uh, it will be, it will have a status of in progress. When the form has the status of in progress, you won't see the start button anymore. You'll see the edit button. And so for each one of these forms, we can view in read-only mode or we can start and begin our work. Below the forms, uh, you'll see instructions on how to generate a PDF. And right next to that, you'll see the generate PDF button. And then at the very bottom, you're gonna see the approval history. Once the approval history populates, you'll be able to expand it and see the approval history uh, tracking all the things that happen after you submit your performance report. The approval history will start with you submitting your performance report and then the project officer's response to your submission, whether it's a change request or an approval, will also be tracked in the approval history. Okay, so. That is what it looks like when you have not started or when you're looking at a performance report that is not started. I'm gonna go back to our performance reports tab and I'm gonna open up a performance report that's in progress. And this is what we're gonna to use to go through the system and explore all the things that you see. So once again, we see the tracking ID in the upper left now that at least one of the forms has been edited, you see a new message. And that message is, please complete all the forms in order to submit this report. 
Uh, we have our expandable header again uh, with all the information. Submitted date is still blank because it has not been submitted. And then we have our grantee data entry section where we can see all of our all of our forms. And I'm just going to jump into form one. I'm going to click on the edit button. Notice they're all, almost all of them are in progress. Uh, one of them is complete and one of them is not started. Uh, so the ones that are in progress and complete, we have the edit option. The one that's not started, we have the start option. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the edit button for form one. And when form one opens up, the first thing you're going to see is you're going to see the public burden statement. Uh, this is the default first step in form one. So we have our public burden statement here. Uh, in the public burden statement, you're going to be able to see the OMB control number and the date through which the OMB control number is valid. Uh, and then to the right of the public burden statement, you'll see the steps. This is to help you as you're navigating through a particular form. These are all the steps that you'll need to complete as you're going through a form. So you can see that this step has five forms and we're on the first step, which is the public burden statement. You're also gonna notice coming back here to the main part of the screen, there's a back to main screen button. If we click on that, that's gonna take us back to the main screen where we can see all of our forms and we can get back into form one just by clicking the edit button again. And there's also a next button. The next button is very important. It's how you navigate from one step to the next and it's how you save your information that you're putting into the system in each step. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the next button and go to the next step. The next step is tele-ed con consultation. And here in this step, first thing we see at the top is the form number and the form label. Uh, our expandable header is there again. You're gonna see that in every step of each form. Uh, our back to main screen button, which would take us back to where we see the forms. And then uh, we start seeing subsections. And sometimes your subsections are gonna have instructions to give you a little bit more information about what's expected in that subsection, and sometimes they won't. In this particular subsection, there's instructions. And then we're starting to see the measures themselves. You'll notice that these measures, the first couple have red asterisks next to them. Uh, that indicates that that measure is required. So you have to fill in that measure. If you don't fill in that measure, then uh, you won't be able to proceed. You'll get a validation error. Like if I were to clear this particular measure, uh, it delete it closes out everything I have. So when you say yes, it gives you the opportunity to complete the rest of the form. If you say no, then you can just move forward without the form. But if you leave it blank and don't have anything, then you're gonna get a validation error. Um, so let's see. Uh, next, we have the tele-ed tele consultation uh, numerator and tele-ed consultation denominator. Uh, so the numerator can be a whole number up to 10 digits. Same with the denominator, and that's another validation that you'll face. Um, also, each one of these is required. So if I take out the numerator, I get an error message that it's required. If I clicked on the next button with that blank, again, I'm going to get an error message that it's required. So I'm going to go ahead and put the numerator back. Uh, so now we have our numerator, denominator, and then we have an auto-calculated field that gives us the percentage. And below that, we come to the comments section. This is where you can add any additional comments or any additional explanation that you wanna to give to your project officer about the information that you're reporting in your performance report. The comments are optional. It allows up to 5,000 characters. The comments are form level comments, which means that if you put a comment in on a particular form, it's only going to be seen on that one form. It's not going to be seen on any other form. Uh, but you will be able to see it 
in all of the steps throughout the one form. And next we have our file attachments. And here in the file attachments, you can upload files and attach them. So if you wanna attach files to provide more information or any supporting documentation, you just click on the upload files button. And then you can select the files from your uh, computer that you wanna upload. I'm gonna select a couple of files here and then click open. And the system will upload the files as each file uploads then you're going to see a green circle with a check mark next to that file. And once all the files are uploaded, then you click the done button. And now those files are listed there. And anyone who looks at this performance report, you're including your project officer, can click on the link to see the files. They can choose the option to download the files. And you, as the grantee, will also have the option to delete the file. So if you decide that the file you added is something you want to keep, you can always delete it. Uh, and then we come down and we have the previous button and the next button. But above them, we have our OMB number and the OMB number expiration date. The previous button will take you back to the previous step. In this case, that would take us back to the public burden statement. The next button is going to take you to the next step in the form. If you're on the last step in the form, it's going to take you to our main screen, uh, which is where you can see all of the forms. A couple of things happen when you click on the next button. Uh, first thing that happens is there's a validation check to make sure that everything that you put in uh, meets all the validation requirements uh, for the report. The next thing that happens is the information that you provided is saved. And then the third thing that happens is you're navigated to the next step uh, in the form, or if you're on the last step in the form, you're navigated back to the main screen. Um, so the next button is very important. I mentioned this earlier. You have to click on the next button to save your information. If you don't click on the next button, your information is not being saved. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And that's gonna take us to the next step, uh, the averted transfer step. And here, once again, we have subsections. Um, <clears throat> And it's asking the question, is this section applicable for you? You'll say yes or no. And then there's the mode of transportation where you'll put in uh, for each mode of transportation, the averted transfer, the number of unique patients and the total distance in miles. And once again, we have our comment section and we can see the comment that we put in on the previous step. It's going to be visible on all the steps. And we have our files and attachments. The file attachments that we put in on any step in a form is visible on every step in the form. And then we're going to click Next again. Uh, and that's going to take us to the next step, the reason for originating site visit. Uh, and the first question is, is this applicable? And then you'll see the information in this section the measures that are to be answered. Anyone with a red asterisk is a required field. Um, <clears throat> and then we have our comments again and the file attachments again. And we click next to navigate to the last step. Once again, we have our measures. Uh, in this case, the measures are looking for numerators and denominators for various uh, situations. And then we have our comments, <clears throat> our file attachments, and we click the next button. And that was the last step in that form. So it brings us back to the main screen. So the next uh, form in the main, in this is form two, which is your priorities. I'm gonna go ahead and click edit on the priorities so you can see what the priorities are. These are yes or no questions. Uh, that you'll have to answer. Once again, if there's a red asterisk, it's a required field. If I clear that and I click next, it's not gonna let me proceed until I put in the required field. It also won't let me proceed if I put in a, a number with a decimal place where it only allows whole numbers or any other validation. You won't be able to proceed until all validations are fixed. Uh, all validation errors are fixed. And then once they're fixed, you can click next and there's only one step in form two. So it immediately brought me back to the main screen. And the next step is form three, 
which is our originating and distance sites. I'm going to click on the edit button here. And in form three, there are a couple things that you need to do. Uh, in the first step in form three, you're going to be selecting your settings. So you can be selecting the settings for this report, uh, all the information that you want to share. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of settings. Over here from the available list, you choose the settings that you want, and then you move them to the selected list. Uh, <clears throat> once you have moved all the settings over that you want in the selected list, then you click the Save button. You have to click the Save button uh, in order to save what you've just done in this table for the settings and what you've moved to the selected list. If you want to take something out of the selected list, you can move it. Uh, back using the other arrow. I'm going to go ahead and put this back. And then I'm going to save. And this is a new form. So our comments, we'd have to put in new comments in this form um, and new file attachments in this form if we had any comments or had any file attachments. And then we click the next button. And that brings us to where you can select your specialties. Uh, and the specialties that you select, uh, you're going to be able to select your specialties from uh, the available specialties. And you can choose more than one by either using the control key to select two that are far apart, or you can use the shift key to select everything between two forms, or sorry, between two settings. I'm going to go ahead and use my control key and be a little bit more selective and move them over. And click Save. And I'm going to click. I can click Next, and that'll take me to the next step. But I'm going to click the Back to Main Screen button here because I want to show you something about the specialties. A couple things. First thing is, back in the Main Screen, currently looking at eight at seven forms. There are eight forms available. To have that eighth form, then you'll need to select the specialty for that form. Uh, and that specialty is going to be uh, diabetes care. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next in the settings. And I'm going to come to Specialties. And I'm going to select the Diabetes Clinical Services. If I select that and save, when I click Next, that's going to add form number eight to the list of forms because we've indicated that we're doing diabetes clinical services. The other thing I wanna point out is the other option in the specialties. You can choose the other option in the specialties. And if you do add other to the selected side, then you're gonna see this field pop up, other specify. And that's where you're gonna tell us the name or the type of specialty that you're indicating as other. So if you choose other, and this is a required field, you see the little red asterisk. So if you choose other, then you need to give us the other name or the other type that you're talking about. I'm going to go ahead and put the other back on this side. When we put it back, then the other specified field goes away. And I'm going to click next. I'm sorry, I'm going to click save. So I made changes. I'm clicking save. And now I'm coming down and I'm clicking next. And that's going to take us to the next step in the form. And the next step is where we see our sites, originating and distance sites. Uh, they're in a table. Um, you'll see that some of them are verified in the status. Some of them are not verified. Um, and one of them has this little red circle next to it. This red circle indicates that there's an error. If you click on the circle, then you're going to get information about what the error is and what you need to do to fix the error. Um, in this case, we need to select the value for the site specialties for this particular site. So we're going to come to that in a minute, but I also want to address this not verified issue. So um, in this one, we it's not verified. And so to verify, you would click on the arrow in this row, and you have an option to view 
this site or edit this site or delete this site. We're going to edit the site. And what's not verified is the address. So you're going to verify the address by clicking on the validate address option. And when you do that, it's going to show you the address that you entered. And it's going to show you the validated address that was found, which is sort of the address that the post office would use. If you continue to use the address that you entered, then uh, your address won't be validated and it won't be verified. If you use the verified, if you use the validated address, then your address will be verified. And while we're in here looking at the site on edit mode, I want to show you the information that is captured for each one of your sites. We have the site address information. Uh, we have the site additional information with things like whether it's an originating or a distant site, whether it's a rural or an urban site, if it uh, is a, in a medically underserved area, if it's serving medically underserved populations, the national provider ID, the primary taxonomy, uh, the HCPN, the EIN, uh, and site URL all are optional. Everything with a red asterisk is a required field. Uh, so those are the fields that you have to fill in. Um, and then the uh, HPSA um, options that you have here, if you want to change that, you can move uh, between the available and the selected tables, the site settings, and the site specialties. I'm going to go ahead and add emergency medicine to the site specialties and then click the save button. <clears throat> and now when we come back, uh, the site is verified. And now let's address this error message here. Once again, we need to select the value for the site specialties. So we're going to close this error message and then click on the option to edit this particular site. And we're going to scroll down to the site specialties. There's no site specialties selected, so we're gonna select one. I'm gonna go ahead and select uh, emergency medicine. I'm gonna select more than one and diabetes clinical services, and then click save. So now the error message has been resolved and the red circle goes away. Uh, and if you needed to add a site, you can click on the add site option uh, when you look at this site list, you're, you're initially seeing all the sites that you had listed in your previous reporting period have been brought over into the system for you. Uh, if you need to verify any information in those sites, you'll see the verification is or not verified. If there are any missing information, you'll see that error, little red circle that indicates an error. And if you want to add a site, you just click on the add site button and you'll see a window uh, much like the window that we just looked at, but this one, you have to fill in all the information. I'm not gonna create a new site now. I'm just gonna close that. And you can see the number of records per page. If you had more than 10 sites, then there'd be a second page option for you, uh, or you could expand to show 20 records at a time or 50 records at a time or all records at a time. It's up to you. And then we come to the next subsection where you'll see uh, the origin number of originating sites and number of distant sites based on what you've entered here in this table. We have three originating sites here, three originating sites here. Uh, then you have your comments and your file attachments. And then below the file attachments, we have a box that says mark form is complete. Even though you filled in all the information for all three steps, this form will not be marked as complete until you check the box to mark the form as complete. You check that box to mark the form as complete and then click next. And your form is gonna be marked complete. So form two is marked as complete. And you can see some of my forms are a little out of kilter that can happen from time to time. Uh, that's a Salesforce issue native to the Salesforce program itself. It's not something our developers can fix, but it's easily fixed by just refreshing your screen. So I refresh my screen and all the problems are fixed. Um, so next we're gonna go to form three.
I'm sorry, we were just in form three. Let me go to back to main screen. Next, we're gonna to go to form four and click edit. And in form four, uh, this is where you're gonna be putting in the specialties and services by site information. Uh, there's an advisory notice to add a, please note adding a site will reset the forms uh, that are in progress. And there's a little uh, notice here to please select a value for the specialties actively available through telehealth. And we have some red circles here, which indicate errors. Click on the red circle. It's saying, please select the value for specialties actively available through telehealth by hovering over the cell under the question, was the specialty available in your community prior to this TNGP funding? Uh, if I click on the one on row four, it's the same. So basically what it's telling us is for each one of these, we need to fill in the information in this last column uh, where the question is being asked, was the specialty available in your community prior to this TNGP funding? So if you hover over the row under that particular question, you'll see there's a pencil. Click on that pencil. You can choose to answer your question, yes or no. And then hit the tab key. And now you'll see it's highlighted in yellow because it's changed, but it's not yet saved. And you can go through each one of these and choose yes or no. If you choose no, then you're indicating that this is a new uh, specialty. If you choose yes, you're indicating that the specialty existed before the funding began. And I'm going to say no. And so now that I have filled in the answer for all of these, I'm going to go ahead and click the Save button. So now the red circles went away. The message telling us to fill in the red circle, or fill in the information in this column went away. And if we scroll down, we can see that in the total sites with new access to services, uh, the number of sites that have access to the specialty, uh, we can see a count for each one that we put in where the answer was no. Each specialty we put the answer is no is counted here as a new access to service. Then we have our comments, our file attachments, and we click next. There's only one step in this form, so it brings us back out to the main screen, but it's still in progress. And that's because I didn't check the box to indicate that it's marked as complete. You have to check that box in order for it to be marked as complete. So I'm going to check that box now and then click Next. And now Form 4 is marked as complete. And I'm going to go to Form 5. And in form five, we have our error messages again. It's asking us to fill in these pieces of information, unique patient, uh, number of real-time encounters, number of store and forward encounters. Uh, and if I go to these others, it's the same error message. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, hover over the row in under each one of these and fill in information and hit tab. And that last column gets calculated for us.
Now we filled in all that information. It's highlighted in yellow because it's not saved yet. Click the save button. And in the total unique patient encounters, we're seeing the information that we put in here reflected here. I'm gonna go ahead and click next take us to the next form. And as I'm going through these, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and uh, my colleagues can answer your questions for you. Probably should have mentioned that earlier, but I've been focused. So please, if you have any questions, put them in the chat and we'll address them there. Uh, next in form five, we have the volume of services and site specialties. This information here is filled in. There's no errors. Everything's been filled in. Um, and so if they need to apply an information, you would put it in and then click next. And again, I didn't uh, go back to main screen. Didn't check that box. I'm going to go to form six real quick. And in form six, it's telling us which fields need to be filled in for the, each one of these rows. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill it in. Putting in time, you'll notice the time is formatted differently. It tells you how the time is formatted here. And as I'm putting each one of these in, you'll notice that it's calculating for me the miles saved and the time saved. And then once you have your information filled in, click the save button. And your total miles saved is calculated for you and your total time saved is calculated for you. And then click the next button. Oh, sorry. We're gonna click mark form is complete and then click the next button. And you notice we got an error because we're on form six and we marked it as complete, but form five is not marked as complete. The forms have to be marked complete in order. So we're going to remove this, uh, the check box out of that, and we're going to go back to form five and mark it as complete. And then we're going to go to form six and mark it as complete.
And then we're gonna come to form seven and click the start option and fill in the information for form seven. If there were other values that you wanted to report under other uses of telework, tele network, telehealth network, then you would put in the other value here. And if you fill in the other value, then you have to put something in for the other specify. This other specify field allows up to 2000 characters. It's expandable. So you can expand it up to 2000 characters. Uh, and these two are tied together. If you put in a value, you have to put in a description in the specify. If you put a description in the specify, you have to put in a value. Otherwise you're gonna get a validation message. And then you'll notice the distance learning is zero right now. That's going to change when I start filling in the formal education and total number of sessions and total number of people. If I put the total number of sessions in as 12, distance learning goes up to 12. Total number of people, 34. And then for informal education, the number of sessions, we're going to say it was 45. So now distance learning is reflecting total number of sessions for formal and informal education. And for the total number of people, I'm gonna say it was 564. In your comments section, your attachment section and click next. And the last form, the diabetes form is there because we chose that specialty for diabetes. I'm gonna click the start button. And here, you'll fill in the information for this step. So our total number of people, unduplicated patients with diabetes served is 33. And then it breaks it down by the number of patients whose diabetes number was 7.0 or less, whose diabetes number fell between 7.1 and 9.0, and whose diabetes number was 9.0 or higher or did not have a test. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make this 12, and I'm going to click Next. We're triggering a validation because this total number should equal each number, each, the tally of the numbers in these three fields. And... So if I change this to 11, then these three fields equal 33, and the total field, the number of unduplicated patients equals 33, and now I click Next. So now all my fields, sorry, all my forms are completed, and you'll notice there's a new message here at the top that all forms have been completed and validated. You may proceed to submit this report and there's a submit for review button. So I'm gonna go ahead and submit this. And when you click submit for review button, the comments field comes up. These comments are optional. Um, and once you put in your comment, if you don't wanna submit, you can cancel. If you wanna submit, you can click the submit button. I'm gonna go ahead and click the submit button. and it says it was successfully submitted. And if I expand my collapsible header, my review status has gone from in progress to submitted. Uh, my submitted date is filled in. You'll notice for my forms, there's no longer an edit option because it's been submitted. And if we come down to the approval history, um, you will see that there's information in the approval history if I expand it the most recent record is at the top uh, with the date and timestamp, the status, the person who submitted the record and the comments that they added. Also wanna point out the generate PDF. Maybe after you submit uh, your report, you wanna generate a PDF so you can memorialize the information that was there when you submitted it. You click on the generate PDF button. It starts opening the preview window. Uh, you'll notice as the preview window opens, there's this little box here that says generating PDF. 
once the PDF is ready to go, that's going to change from generating PDF to <clears throat> download PDF. Uh, and you can see a preview of the PDF there. If I click on the download PDF option, then it's going to download the PDF. Uh, I can go to the folder where the PDF is downloaded, or I can click on open file to open the PDF uh, and see my PDF. Uh, the PDF shows the program name, the organization, the grant information, reporting start and end dates, the report due date, the submitted date, and then all the information that you submitted for each one of the measures. I'm going to go ahead and close the PDF and close this. Uh, and we have a little bit of time. We're getting close to the top of the hour. There is one more thing I want to show you. Uh, data extracts tab. This is where you're going to see the reports that you have access to. Um, you're going to be able to see your TN, you, most, it opens up to your most recent reports. I recommend you click on all reports to see all the reports that you have access to. Uh, and I'm going to do a little quick search here for TNGP. So now we're just seeing the TNGP reports. You're going to see the grantee raw data report. This report shows you all the information that you put in on the forms um, that you entered data in. It's going to show you your program name first, then the data collection start and end date, the grant number, the grantee city, the grantee state, your grantee organization, then the tracking ID for each one of your performance reports that you have in the system. You're only seeing the data associated with your grant organization. And then you'll start seeing uh, the information that you put in on the different forms. Some of your forms are just a table or a grid that is reflecting information. That table or grid is not in this form uh, because the table in, uh, or grid is there. Uh, we have additional forms for you, uh, sorry, additional reports for you. Uh, and you can see in the description here. So for form two, you have the grantee uh, originating and distance sites. That's where you're gonna see the, the chart, the sites chart that's in form two. Uh, for form three, you have the, uh, um, I'm sorry, we're showing, let me go back to TNGP. So for form three, uh, in TNGP, for form three, you have your uh, originating and distant sites. Uh, there's two forms, uh, two reports. One report shows the list, which shows all the information that you put in for any one of your sites. Remember when we opened up to edit the site and I showed you how to add a new site, all those fields are in this uh, report. The other report uh, just shows the one that's not labeled list shows the grid that is actually on form three. Uh, for form four, we have your sites with new access to service. Uh, and then we have uh, the same by site. And then for form five, we have the grantee volume of service report. And then for form six, we have two reports, uh, the grantee unique patient encounters and the grantee patient total miles, patient miles and time saved. So you'll be able to open up all of these reports and see the information that you would see uh, in that particular form in report form. And for each one of these reports, you're gonna be able to export the report by clicking on the export option and you can format export it as a formatted report option or details only the formatted report option is going to keep it in the format that you're seeing when you're looking at your computer screen details only is going to take away all that formatting none of the headers none of the grouping none of the filter settings or anything like that it's just going to show you the raw data that is there for that particular report uh, if you choose the formatted report, then you're getting, there's only one format choice, which is 
the Excel format uh, .xlsx. If you choose the details only, you have several formatting choices, uh, two of which are for Excel formatting and the other one is comma delimited formatting. formatting. You also can choose your encoding options. Uh, and I'm going to pause there uh, and see if there are any questions. I know we're right up against time. So I just want to go ahead. I don't know how many questions have been uh, addressed in the chat just yet, but if there are any questions that you have, uh, please unmute and ask Hi. your question or put it in the chat. Hi, Jerry. Um, we did have a question from Ryan Narlock who wanted to know, does the section PT travel miles and time save transfer from the legacy system as well? So um, the report that you're looking at, like we're looking now at the of patient miles and time saved, it's showing for each one of your uh, performance reports that you have. All of your previous performance reports from the classic system, uh, from the legacy system, uh, will not be reflected. You're not gonna be able to edit them in the data collection platform, but they will be reflected in these reports. In the, in the grantee raw data report, they'll be listed am amongst all your other tracking IDs uh, and all the other re uh, performance reports that you worked on. Uh, that's why we gave you those start and end dates and things like that, so you can determine which one is which. And also, when you're looking at these reports that are reflecting the information that's in a particular grid, then you'll be able to see anything from legacy will be brought in and it'll be here with the associated uh, performance report ID, tracking ID. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and then Kim wanted to know, can you add collaborators? Um, not sure what you mean by add collaborators, Kim. Uh, sure, I can. I can articulate that. Um, so okay. like we have a grants contractor and a data scientist that works um, with our data for PIMS um, in the past. And so I've always gained them access so that we can work on the report together or that they can fill it out on our behalf. So uh, just like with the PIMS section uh, or the, the PIMS classic, you are gonna be able to have multiple people be able to log into Salesforce uh, and work on your performance reports. Uh, and if you want to designate your collaborator as one of those people, then yes, you can. And then, can you walk, could you sorry. walk through that step on how to do that? Um, that's going to be uh, submitting that person to the uh, help desk or the OM team to have a uh, have a user record created for them. And once the user record is created for them, they'll be able to log in and um, they'll be able to log in and work on your performance reports. Okay, Colleen wanted to know what is the report setup process, e.g. by grantees or HRSA? I'm sorry, Colleen. What, what is, is the, the report setup process? So can grantees set up their own reports or reports set up for them? Oh, the reports are set up for you. The reports are set up based on the data uh, that was put in in your previous reporting year and any information that's being brought over in this reporting year. So the performance reports are set up for you. You can just go in and answer the questions in the performance reports. You don't set up the reports. Are there any other questions while well, we still have Jerry? Yeah, Catherine, I have a question. Um, you, I think you try, you answered it in, but in the chat, but I don't quite understand the answer. So the question was, can we print a PDF of this entirely yes. without? Yes. Okay, so how so can that you show is, us how to do that? Yeah, Jerry, do you mind going back to the generate PDF button? Yeah. So when I was in the report, let me go ahead and close this. When I was in the report, I clicked on the generate PDF. It generates the PDF.
But can you do this before you enter any data? Yes, you can do it at any time. Okay. So you and just go to that front page and click on generate PDF. Yes. Okay. Thanks. All right. And we do need to drop off because we have another uh, training session that started at three. Uh, were there any other outstanding questions? I can take maybe one more. J yeah. Jerry, hi. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, Jerry. Uh, this is Carlos. Uh, when will the link be sent for grantees to be able to access this platform? Um, I don't know the exact date. I do know it will be sent out before they before it's time for them to begin reporting. I'd have to okay check for you, Carlos. No. To get All the right. Exact. Thank, thank you, Jerry. Thank you for this presentation. Um, and if grantees have questions or other uh, difficulties, can they reach out to you or someone on your team, or do they need to go through me and then I reach out to you? Uh, I think. They should go through you, and then you can reach out to me. There's also a um, help desk option. If they click on the help button, there's information where they can go to contact the HRSA Contact Center. Uh, there are resources here for the OAT programs um, for help available, and uh, so they'll be able to use that resource. But if you have, if grantees have questions. Uh, they can filter them through you, and uh, we can help uh, filter the answer back to through you to them. Uh, okay. Or they they'll be in production, so they may need to work with the team that's managing the production instance also. But okay. we'll be happy to help as much as we can. Thank you so much, Jerry. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.